right, Pete Moore, Gunmark TV, and welcome to the second part of my look at the Southern Gun Co. Lee Reaction 9mm rifle, LAR9. I did a little video, mainly me just having a general chat and shooting it about three weeks ago. Had at least 1,500 hits so far and counting, and probably 50, 60 uh, comments. So it's a bit of interest. So what is it? Well, first of all, it is a bona fide section one firearm. Um, it's not like the um, lever release system that Bob made some time ago in 9mm, 223 and 308, which uses an interrupted gas piston system, which technically wasn't a self-loader, but uh, the government didn't like it. And uh, after about a year or so or two years, they decided to ban them all as they do. So what it is, it's a rethought lever action rifle uh, compared to the old um, designs like Winchester's 1894, 73, that sort of thing, uh, which is technology that's about 150, 160 years out of date. Nothing wrong with it, it works, um, but this is very different. The most obvious thing about it is the lever. The lever sits in front of the trigger guard, and it's almost the same shape as the operating lever on a Winchester. However, the Winchester is angled like this to the grip. That's how it works. So literally, you just push forward and back. I think the stroke's about um, three inches and uh, about 40 degrees maximum. So it's not like doing this and yanking it forward, it's, it's quite quick. Control-wise, it's very much an AR-15. Safety catch is the standard AR rolling lever. Safe fire. Magazine, again, is at the front of the magwell. Takes Glock magazines in 9mm, for example. Uh, currently, as you can see, this is only a, a right-handed catch you know, for a right-handed shooter. But this is machined away, and it looks like Bob said he's going to be making an ambi catch at a later date. The butt is a simple, basic uh, buffer tube and CAR-15 type butt. Uh, there's no spring in here, there's no need to, because it's all operated down here. The barrel is a stainless, sort of, well, I'll call it heavy, fluted 16-inch uh, tube with a 1 in 10 twist, which uh, from experimentation with different loads in the last few weeks, pretty much handles most weights. Um, up front is a muzzle brake, which is not standard. That will be, that's an extra, as we shall see. The fore end is in-house again. It's a... Uh, in block types so you can put rails and things on it if you want to here i've got a little hand stop on it just out of interest um, and that's pretty much the basics of the rifle right i've stripped the rifle down to its major components upper and barrel lower bolt this is not bob's first segue to lever actions rifles he had um a gun called the la lever action there's a lever action 9 and a lever action 30 which um and in the case of the LA, the whole pistol grip hinged. There was no lever, and there was a, like a, a hook that came up and just operated the bolt. But the only problem was the angle moving the lever, it was very, it got a bit weird and unnatural. With this operation, as I've pointed out, it's quite short and fast. So how it works is obviously the lever connects to these two, um, should we say, or pause the car and they have rollers in them. These rollers engage in what I would describe as a toggle mechanism. They, they rise and they push back on this face here, which as you can see lifts up a lug, which is the actual locking lug. Uh, it's a big, I say a big lump of steel. And again, if we can see it in here, I hope we can, Locking is achieved by this steel insert, carbon steel insert, that's inset into the top of the receiver. So it's a good and solid system. It has a plunger ejector and a large claw extractor. This gun, if you run it properly, it just pulls those very short nine ball cases out and chucks them across the room without any, any problems whatsoever. Uh, the gun strips like a standard AR, as you probably noticed, you've got up You've got two body pins here, they knock out, the upper comes off, 
and the upper completely bolt disconnects from the operating lever and yoke. And uh, there you have it. I mean, I haven't shot a line mill for ages. Um, and I found reasonably quickly that the rifle is not so happy with hollow points. Um, I probably can't see, I, I, there'll be an image of this, but um, it's a short little round. It comes up the feed ramp quite at a sharp angle. And I found with these big hollow points, and these nines do have quite big hollow points on them, that if you operate them too fast, they can catch on the mouth of the chamber. Uh, what it does like is, no, is standard round nose, full metal jacket ball, or round nose hard cast lead. Um, I actually got some dies from Crank's um, Lee Precision carbide four die set for nine mil. Um, and And it's their hard cast 125 grain bullets and also some Sierra 125 grain jacketed hollow points uh, using their true blue. I'm going to do a little feature on, on loading for 9mm, not on this one, but later on. I knocked out 25 of each of the uh, round nose lead and the, the, and, and the jacketed um, hollow point reloads. Um, they're running okay, interesting figures, um, but I did notice very much that you can slow operate the hollow points, but you can't fast operate the, them. Whereas the, the round nose, be it FMJ or hard lead, doo -doo -doo -doo, they go in and out like that. To check 50 yard accuracy. And I would say now, after sort of running in a bit, that the gun is capable of around about an inch um, with, say I used um, four factory loads, uh, Magtech 124 grain uh, uh, full metal jacket, PPU, which is Privy Partisan, 115 grain full metal jacket, a Remington a 115 full metal jacket, and their 124 grain, uh, I think it's called Golden Sabre hollow point. Overall, it's been pretty, pretty good. Uh, punching out to 100 yards, again, once it's been zeroed in, it's shooting, I would say, two, three inches. That If you could get hold of something like a 147 grain, 154 grain bullet, with the one in 10 twist would probably refer that to this lighter and medium stuff. But the, the good thing is, if you buy one of these, roll into your local gun shop, you say, oh, I need some nine mil, and they've got like, say PPU 115 grain or Remington 115 grain, um, provided you do your bit, the gun's gonna shoot. I'm using Remington UMC 115 grain FMJ. Glock mags are <clears throat> quite stiff to full when they're new. And uh, the capacity here is 17 rounds maximum. And I would recommend that if you do get one of these, you'll probably buy a couple of spare mags of it. I would load up these mags to capacity and leave them for a week or so. Uh, because that will just, should we say, break them in a little bit. If you're shooting with a full mag, Bob recommends that you open the action first, put the mag in, then shut it. So what you do, open it up, put your safety on, mag just clips in like that, shut it up, flick it on, and let's see what it's going to do. So there you have it, the latest gun from Southern Gun Company. And I've got to say, um, from the point of view of knowing Bob, he's an innovator and he, he transformed the standard T-handle operated straight pull AR-15 that came in after the SLR ban into something that was actually practical. Uh, he's also produced a single shot rotary breech 44 Magnum long range pistol, uh, a 2.2 AR-15, a 2.2 up with a drop on, the lever release series. The guy is clever, no question about it. And this to me is probably, in terms of like a sort of pistol caliber rifle, is one of the best things he's ever produced. So Pete Moore signing off. Um, let us know what you think. And hopefully I'll be able to do a bit more of this before Bob takes it out of my hands.
because I'm really, I'm really, really liking it. See ya.